All right, JD, as I interrupt you, uh, texting on your phone. Not texting, there. just always checking my to-do list. Check. It's, it's, they're awful, awful. But you never do any of awful it. Awful long. You never do any of it. Well, I wouldn't go to that far, but but you uh, you things you do push things, them back. Things Dave. do get pushed back a lot. Okay. Um, second world team. Okay. Well, first off, I you know I like talking to. You, uh, let's talk pancakes. Pancakes. Let's talk match two of two. I really to get like, on the world team. Oh, I thought you were talking about cloud nine. I know you don't eat pancakes North anymore. Star. Yeah, I don't. But. Let's talk about um, how long have you been pancaking people for? Um, Since you were a kid? I don't know. I don't Does that seem like a reaction? That seemed like something that yeah, for a sure system. Reaction. It wasn't like a setup. Like I came up through a Russian system and this is no, something No, that, that comes back to what I teach when I teach kids. I talk about perfect position wrestling is what I call it. And um, a, lot, a lot of things I picked up from Russ Helgson and really the basics of wrestling, the basics of athletic position, um, the reason why there's a wrestling stance in almost every sport. Short stop. Short stop, yeah. In wrestling position. Linebacker. Linebacker. Uh, a, a sprinter, you know, is right down there with the power underneath you. And when, when uh, you know, guys shoot open open shots, you know, if you're going to shoot an open shot, you need to first get your opponent out of position a little bit. I wasn't. So that just goes back to showing how, how strong and how beneficial that is for wrestlers to learn how good a stance. I mean, just having a good stance um, will help you offensively and defensively. Chris Pendleton's pretty good, though. Very good. So I think he thought good. that he was just going to come out and surprise you and overwhelm you. Know, I, think he, I think he's done that open shot, or I think he's done that shot to other guys that are probably less powerful, probably, or, or but but I was in a good stance and, and not light on my feet and ready for whatever was going to come. What was the official fall on that? What was the uh, time? They said 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Mm-hmm. Playing the two time NCAA champion, 18 seconds. Yep. With good position. In the finals of World Team Trials, which is not, to get on the team, which is not normal, yeah. And that put you on the team. Mm-hmm. That's pretty amazing. Now, that's what I want to come to. This is my my big thing. I've been talking to other people about is a lot of people don't think JD Bergman. You know, this is your fourth cycle. This is your fourth four-year cycle if you look at it. Yeah. Oh four, you wrestled in the Olympic Trials. Yeah. Uh, oh eight, to get on Beijing, mm-hmm. and then uh, twelve, where you were third. Twenty twelve, where you were third. Um, Varner got on the team, and Tommy was in the finals against him. Yeah. Actually, Pendleton beat you then. Yeah. He uh, beat, up, you, beat you in 2012. Yeah, upset me last year, first round. So, you know, and then you came back and took third. Yeah. So, you know, this is, you're going into 2016 your fourth cycle. Yeah. And J.D. Bergman's body, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty beat up. Yeah. But, uh, and a lot of people don't think J.D. can make it through 2016. At least, at least my past. No, that's, that's pretty accurate. And, and no, and, and, and you know, it's not like being negative or anything. It's just kind of like kind of your track record has gone. You've had some injuries. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you, how do you change your life? How do you change your training style? How do you change that so you can get through 2016, you know, win a medal here in 2013 and, and, and get to 2016? Well, I mean, uh, I try to, I, I've, I've noticed that uh, my past interviews with Flo or any interview let alone, um, at all has been kind of long-winded. So that question, <laughs> that question can't be answered in a short um, But that's way. okay, so, we got so hard drive space. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll just try to say a couple, couple highlighted points or a, a high-level overview of, of how I've changed, what I've done. And um, I mean, I think first of all, it starts, people live by sight. People live by sight a little bit too much instead of living by faith. Um, and God calls us to live by faith. And that, that perspective, I have different lenses on that I'm wearing now than I had seven years ago. And when, it, when my faith and, and comes to, um, to my, my sport and how I live, why I live, uh, I, I've gotten a lot of direction and clarity on kind of how to change some things. And I guess, I guess in the last two years, um, I can say with the Ohio Therapy Institute, they've helped me since 2008 when I blew my other knee out. That was my fourth knee surgery in three years in 2008 trying to make the Olympic team in 2008 to upset Daniel Cormier, which probably wouldn't have happened (laughs) because uh, uh, Daniel was the man. But um, that was my goal, and I blew my knee out instead. And I thought I might retire then. Now, um, I had to do a lot of praying and soul searching there and figuring out if if wrestling was a good idea. And against a lot of doctors' opinions, I kept on going to 2012. Now, even me, I, I did not think the last five years that I would be wrestling after 2012. Of course, I thought I wanted to... I was planning on making the 2012 team and winning a gold medal. Instead, uh, Varner did that for America, which was awesome for our country. And um, but things didn't really go the way I had planned, though life doesn't go the way we plan. Um, so after 2012, after this past summer, I actually gained 20 pounds in two weeks. 
kind of binging and eating what I hadn't eaten in a long time. I got up to 245 from like 225 uh, in two weeks. And um, catfish spiff. That was probably in there somewhere. Um, and some and a lot of ice cream. And I uh, I basically was was binging. I consider myself a food addict, and I I, I relapsed. Um, and uh, but but to, to stick back to this two year cycle. When I uh, hurt hurt my shoulder and uh, man, his shoulders, knees, back, it's been a lot of stuff. It's like been everything. Uh, it's been everything, yeah. Most of my joints, uh, most of my joints, and, and um, I, I started getting plugged in with Maximize Living Chiropractors and and kind of learning how there's a power inside our body where our body can heal itself, and if we just change our lifestyle, um, we can really help ourselves. We can we can cut down on medications to to zero, which medications aren't even good for us anyways, and we can. Um, we can heal ourselves. We can be sick less. We can uh, be functioning at a higher efficiency level, and we can actually feel good. Most Americans don't know what it feels like to feel good. They know what it feels like to have a better day relative to their inflamed state they're always in because of the garbage they eat and their lack of exercise, and maybe their nervous system isn't functioning healthy. So, um, again, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep a focus here. But in the last two years, I've done a lot of things. I've basically I'll start. Uh, before two years ago, I pretty much you know I had a, I had a six pack wrestling at 197 in college and and eating eating, you know, fairly good, but, but I didn't really know what good was. I thought Subway was healthy. Subway is not healthy. Um, I have no problem saying that because, I mean, I, it's not directly against them. I said the corporations, I mean, we're, people are eating a lot of stuff that is inflammatory to their system. It's directly leading to more headaches and, and more allergies and all that. So it, it breaks my heart to see um, mothers and, and dads and you know, parents feeding their kids stuff that's making them sick. They we don't, went, they, they don't know it. They we don't know went it. to McDonald's today. Yeah. And, and you got sick. like upset because I just wanted a coffee. Yeah, right. You and know, and that's all I can eat from there because it makes me sick. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, and that's, I guess, good for me. But um, good for me that makes me sick. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you, you know, you kind of, man, why is this so crowded? Why do you think people, why, why is that? It's an instant gratification model and, and uh, convenience and, and time. And I'd say time and money are the reasons why people don't aren't healthy and, and don't want to spend time to realize what health is and the, the common knowledge behind the health truth, I'm sorry, the truth about health is far from common knowledge. We're lied to by the food corporations and by the pharmaceutical companies and by the big businesses and it, it really snaps me and it, it's not just nutrition but again I, I, I credit a lot to Maximize Living and I, I, gotta, I gotta also mention that Ohio Therapy Institute um, and the hours of rehabilitation and, and massage therapy now with Mark Adams and Jeff and Jeff and Julie over there at, at the OTI have helped me out since 2008. So, but but recently in the last two years, I, I went from I broke my back in high school, as you know, and I didn't like chiropractors, and I just thought, you know, I, I hurt, it got hurt when I got adjusted. I'm like, give me a massage, that feels better. But that was a different um, mentality that those chiropractors at the Olympic Training Center had, and the the holistic wellness chiropractors that, w that are progressive and they they um, basically put the power in your hands. They basically they say they turn your power on, basically get your spine in the right alignment, so your the uh, your brain sending messages to your body more efficiently, and uh, and then they also encourage you to eat. They give you uh, basically nutrition, um, awesome nutrition information and exercise. I worked out in Dr. J's garage uh, a year and a half ago, uh, like a couple times a week. And uh, just doing some nice burst um, training, and so fast forward to to this fall that I started talking to you guys about. Um, I gained 20 pounds in two weeks, and I had another maximum living chiropractor, Dr. Michael Vanman in Canada. It was his idea. He has six kids. This is how nice of a guy he is. He has six kids, and awesome guy. And he he was his idea. He said, um, "Come up here and live with me for three weeks for free, and uh, we'll feed you." You moved to Canada for three weeks. I was up there in three weeks in, in September, and. I went up there. I went up there with. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't even st stay focused. Logan Sievers. <laughs> uh, but so, like, the short end of it is, the things that have changed for you are, are holistic chiropractic, and, and, chiropractic and, and, and organic times, foods. And, and organic foods, and I, I went from like you know, having pizza and ice cream kind of frequently, probably, and things like that. I just use that as the scapegoat. But like things that are kind of inflammatory to my system. I took sugar out. I'm a world-class athlete, and I don't eat bread, rice, or pasta anymore on a daily basis. So if I'm going to give the short, condensed answer. Short, condensed answer is take sugar out and implement good, healthy fats like avocado and coconut oil and, and now and, and healthy chiropractic care. And, and then I do, oh, cross hip mobility is huge. Helps my body feel a lot better. I literally feel younger. Um, I have more energy. I, I recover faster. 
I mean, I'm just functioning better. I'm a little bit lighter and leaner and stronger, and it's great. So.